Good morning, everybody. Okay, I hope you can hear me very well right now. Welcome back again to Mahali Gate International School's DEL program, Online Learning, and this is Mr. Ahmed Abbasi for today, wishing you a nice beginning for the week, inshallah. Back again, we speak about chapter seven. You know, chapter seven, we speak about uh, summary writing. It has been like two weeks, and we studied the summary, how to write the summary techniques, and we studied the strategies, and we studied some ideas about how to do it, and so on. But actually, when I give you some tasks, I started to find something else. Some of you didn't get the main idea of writing the summary, and some of you didn't follow the structures, some of you didn't follow uh, any of the strategies we, we said. So we said we have two, but actually, you didn't pick one of them. And that's the problem. So we're going back again to the drawing board to know where is the mistake and to see some samples of your answers and some other answers for the exercises I gave you in order to avoid these mistakes and achieve our target, which is the perfect summary. Our objectives today for writing the summary are so specific we're gonna revise the summary together. And please, in this session, if you have any question, you're gonna to have to raise your hand directly to ask me. Techniques in writing the summary, we said we have many techniques. One of them is paraphrasing. Paraphrasing that I, I didn't see anyone doing this actually. I checked your tasks like twice, two tasks. And none of you did this. None of you followed this technique, which is paraphrasing. Back again, paraphrasing means to see something in a different way. For example, we had an example last time like this. Um, paraphrasing, it means to say something correctly, completely, in a short way, in your own words. And that was the example that we had last time. We said, it's better to prevent something unpleasant from happening than try to put it try it forwards. We said that prevention is better than cure. Maybe you didn't get this example. I can give you another example. Uh, paraphrasing means to have a long story to make it short. Like when you say that when he went home, he opened the door, he slapped the door open and he just swifted in. He found the, the first sofa in front of him. He plopped himself and told him his mom that no one wakes him up. All this long story, we didn't need it. We need the main core of it. That he was tired when he went back home. He was exhausted when he went back home. That's it. So paraphrasing means, again, to make a long story short. A long story to make it short. Okay, why paraphrasing is important. We said the main core or the main target, the main idea of writing a summary is to use your own words, to use your own words. And that's the problem. Some samples that I saw and I'm gonna show you right now, they use the language of the text, they copy. They, they are doing like puzzles. They cut pieces and join them together. They even do not match. And that's the problem. So you don't have to cut and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, no. You have to write with your own words. That's the summary skill. We're working according to the curriculum of IGCSE standard. You know the standard of IGCSE? That's the future, inshallah. That's how you're gonna do your exams. So if you just copy and paste like this, you'll get nothing. You have to write in your own words. How shall I do it? Read, understand, and use your words. You can get some words from the text, okay, no problem, but you should not cut and paste. The other technique for writing the summary was said, the condensation. Condensation means make something shorter, make something more, uh, let's say, talking about one thing. For example, instead of using many words to express your ideas, you can use one word, that's condensation. Using synonyms can help here. He had a good command of English. Had a good command of English. Many words to say that he's good at English. He knew English well. So maybe you say it 
in a way. The other students say it in a way, no problem. That's your way. Both of them are correct. There is no specific way for condensation. As I said in the first answer, um, he had a good command of English. I said, he's good at English. That's one way to condense it. The other way, he knew English well. That's another way. Another one will say he's perfect in English. And so on. I believe you have a question. Professor. Yes. What is the difference between the condensation and the paraphrasing? Good. In con yeah, keep with me. Keep the mic off. Okay. Paraphrasing means to change the whole sentence or the whole, uh, let's say, the whole group of sentences and put your own sentence. You get it? As, you, as, as I said in my example, when I said when he, when he went into the house, he slapped at the door, he found the first bed and plopped himself and told his mom not to wake him. I yes. didn't use any of these words. And I just said he was tired when he went back home. That's paraphrasing. To say a different sentence, but it has the same meaning. You get it? Yes. In condensation, you underline some group of words and find a synonym for them. Actually, both of the techniques give you the same result. Give, give you a new sentence. And a shorter one. Yes, but the condensation, you don't go far away from the meaning. You, you take it one sentence by one sentence. Thank you. You're welcome. Back again to the technique of condensation. We said to make it shorter, you can remove some words and use the synonyms. And that's a good technique. The other way to change the structure. If you have a complex sentence, okay, you have to make it shorter a little bit. You have to make it simple. You have to make it compound, simple, compound, something around that. Because you know, simple, it has no conjunctions. Compound, it has two dependent, uh, two de independent sentences or clauses connected with one of the fanboys. So you have to make a simple structure of the sentence. My brother has an appreciation of modern art. My brother appreciates modern art, has an appreciation, it's the same, okay? Now, that's what I'm talking about, uh, the complex sentence into a simple one, like this one. He received a welcome that was as cold as ice. And here you also, I'm using a figure. Figurative language, we don't use figurative language, as some of you used in your summaries. We don't use uh, similes, uh, personifications, metaphors, onomatopoeia, um, what else? Uh, hyperbole, we wouldn't use all of this. So onomatopoeia also is not included. So he received an icy welcome. You can change as cold as ice to one adjective. Make your writing shorter. You get from the text, but you change. You don't copy from the text. You can combine some sentences, as one of you did actually, and I'm gonna show you the sample right now. One of you did it perfectly, but in the middle, he just continued copying. He forgot and he copied some some sentences. To make sentences shorter, you can combine them. If you have a sentence that says that we enjoyed very much in the zoo, and you have another sentence that we uh, enjoyed, one of them, we enjoyed watching animals in the zoo, and one of them, we enjoyed eating ice cream. So you can combine them. That's a simple example for you. I know in summaries you have different sentences, but that's a step one. So we enjoy watching animals and eating ice cream. That's one sentence. Hurry up, if you don't, you will miss the train. Hurry up, or you'll miss the train. That's one way to combine sentences together. So these are some techniques to write the summary, but all of them have the same aim. Do not copy from the text. Do not. And how to write the summary? We said we have two strategies last time. We said we have the systematic approach and we have the magical approach. 
It seems that you chose the systematic approach and you applied it in a wrong way. So we're not gonna go through it today. The systematic approach means to go through the text, um, find the main idea, underline it, make notes, and after that, change it to your own words and write. But you forgot this step to change it into, into your own words. You just copy it and that's it. So forget about the systematic way. Now we're going for the magical approach. Okay. In the magical approach, we said, oh, what you need to do is to your your natural talent, your natural abilities that Allah gave you, you just remove the unneeded information. But be careful because some of you get dragged behind the information. You just follow a blind piece of information. And I'm going to show you how we did this mistake. For the magical approach, you have to read the paragraph. Read the paragraph again, not the whole text. Read the paragraph. You can take just a general view. You can do skimming or scanning for the text, okay? Just to understand the whole idea before you read. But here, you have to start with reading the paragraph, understand it very well, flip the page or turn, up, turn it upside down or just remove it, close the book, whatever, just stop seeing it. Flip the page and try to remember what happened. When you remember what happened, write it in fragments. I'm gonna show you how now, because some of you sent me a message and asked what's the meaning of the content list. A content list is going to be a list of fragments. So write what you remember in fragments. So I read the paragraph about, um, I wanna get something famous for you, about Cinderella. Cinderella story, I wanna I want summarize this story right now. So I read the first part about, her life with um, with her dad and mom after that the death of her mom she went to live with her stepmom and so on so I'm gonna write fragment like or fragments like this with dad and mom mom dies stepmom three points in fragments three fragments three words just when I see these fragments these words my mind will make new sentences but if you write the whole sentence that Cinderella, after the death of her mom, she, after Cinderella was living with her father after the death of her mom. She, uh, her father married again and uh, she lived with her stepmom. If I write all this, my mind is not going to create new things. Just make your mind write fragments to get the most benefit of your talent. Make a content list. When you write these fragments, you make a content list. And at the end, you write your summary paragraph using these lists. That's the content list. Mohamed Salim, you have a question. You can speak now. Mister, why should we use fragments? Yes, I said that, but maybe you didn't hear me. Using fragments give your mind a space to think to create new sentences using your own words, and that's the target of the summary. If you write complete sentences, you will copy. Whatever you're doing, you will copy from the text. But writing fragments, you're not writing the complete information. So your mind will complete it by the important ones, dropping the, the not needed or the unimportant ones. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Back again, look at this. Maybe you don't know this text, but I will bring it for you later, like this one. Here. Look at this text with me. I need some, I need three readers, okay? Three readers. Miriam, you can read paragraph one. Shipwreck survivor. A Chinese man, Pu Lim, is famous for being the longest shipwreck survivor. He spent 133 days in the sea when his ship went down in the South Atlantic after leaving Cape Town. It took just two minutes for the ship to sink. And the only man who managed to survive was Poon Lim. 
Thank you. Miriam, can you answer me for this question? What are the main ideas or what's the main idea that you get from this paragraph? Um, it's, uh, it's implied about the, about the sinking of the, of the ship. About or the sinking about of the ship? Or, or about, about Punlem? Punlem, Punlem. It's about Punlem, yes. So can you just paraphrase all of this into one sentence? Or can you tell me what are the fragments we get from this? Well, I can paraphrase. Uh, Poon Lim survived uh, the sinking of his ship. Thank you. Thank you very much for this. Great. Now, Abdurrahman, you can read the second paragraph. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Read the second one. Despite the mad chaos of the sinking, exploding ship, Lim was still able to grab a life jacket which was vital, as he had never learned to swim well. He floated in the ocean for what he estimated to be around two hours until he spotted one of the ship's life rafts. It was a wooden raft about two and a half meters square, partially covered, with, partially covered by a, can a canvas roof. After much effort, Lim succeeded in reaching it and although weak, managed to pull himself aboard. Luckily for Lim, on the life raft, there were some bottles of juice and tins of biscuits, together with two flares, a flashlight, and even some chocolate. Great. Abrahman, can you tell me some fragments that you can use as main ideas here in this paragraph? That uh, he survived because he was able to grab a life jacket. So we can write a life jacket? He and floated on the sea, in the ocean, sorry. He floated, okay. He, found, he spotted or he found uh, okay. one of the ship's when life rats. Try not to use the language of the paragraph, use your own. So he found. So he found a wooden raft, lifeboat. Yes. Good. On the wooden raft, there was food and, uh, and juices. So let's say food and juices. That's good. So from all this paragraph, you told me like four fragments, like the life jackets about the boat, about um, what else, about floated, and about the supplies or the provisions that he found. Yes. You know, that's what I need. That's what I need. You write these fragments and after that go and try to change them into sentences when you write the paragraph. Thank you, Abrahman. Thank you very much for that. Now, let's go back to the content list. How we deal with this in the content list? You see the first paragraph and the second one that your friends read. We got some fragments. Look at these fragments. Like, number one, in your content list, the, the first idea that you have to grab a life jacket and float it in the sea. So, oh my God, it's mentioned in the second one. What is the first paragraph? In the first paragraph, we don't have important information. We can get the opening sentence. We can get the opening sentence. We don't have an introduction paragraph. All your summary must be in one paragraph. I think that's clear now because like three or four of you wrote in the structure of Introduction, summary, conclusion with three paragraphs and some of you, one of you gave me like five or six paragraphs. This is not a summary, that's an article like this. So you have to give me one final product, which is one paragraph only. Back again to the two paragraphs that we read. <clears throat> In the first paragraph, we can give the general idea or the opening sentence that, uh, that Pondem is, um, let's say, the most famous shipwreck survivor. Okay, that's the main idea. Some of you will get dragged after the information, just saying that where the ship started to, to go and where it sank and what's the location of the crash and so on. No, no, don't go for this. We don't need any how, any where, any when, any what. We don't need these explanations. We need the main ideas. Like the first paragraph, we can say that uh, Pondem is a famous shipwreck survivor or the most famous shipwreck survivor in history, and so on. 
The second paragraph can get a lot of ideas because it's like the main paragraph here. So he spotted a life raft. He found, um, he grabbed a life jacket. He floated in the ocean, as Abrahman said. He spotted a life raft, or he found a life raft, your own language. He pulled himself on board. Okay, so all these are main ideas. Maybe we use them all, or we just don't use any one of them. You just get the fragments you see as main fragments. After that, there were bottles of juice, biscuits, chocolate, or we can say all of these things are provisions. Provisions are not in, uh, <clears throat> the word of provisions is not included into the text. But as a, an efficient or professional writer, I can collect all these things that the writer said. Here, the writer said um, bottles of juices, uh, bottles, of juice, uh, bottles, of, uh, bottles of juice, biscuits, together with flares, a flashlight, and even some chocolate. All of these things are called provisions. So as a professional writer, I can just, again, condense all this to make it one word, provisions or supplies, okay? After that, for the content list as we're going, we finished the two paragraphs, we flipped them, we are getting some ideas, okay? So we get one, two, three. Now we're going to read the third paragraph to get another idea. And for this, I need Rowan. Rowan Matuk, I need you to read the third paragraph. Please. Once, okay. Once Slim realized that his emergency provisions were running out, he knew he knew that he had to invent ways to find food and water. He used the canvas from the roof and his life jacket to make a container to, clear, to catch rainwater. He had never been fishing and had no skills to help him, but he improvised by make, making a fishing hook out of the wire from the flashlight and the jack edges of the biscuit tin. Good. Thank you, Rowan. Can you tell me here, what fragments can you pick as main ideas? Uh, that Boone, Boone Lim did not lose his hope and searched for food and water. Oh, now you tell me a sentence. I need a fragment. The provisions were about to finish. Okay. He used the supplies with him on the raft to help him keep alive. That can be good. Thank you, Ron. Thank you very much for your answers and for reading also. Thank you. Here, as you read all this, all this paragraph, you can find some main fragments or some main ideas here that's when he realized that his provisions are running out, he tried to invent a way to find food and water. So we can get here, running out of provisions, that's one fragment. We can get also, invent ways to get food and water, that's another one. How, I said for these words like how, what, where, when, and why, I don't need them. How, by using the canvas roof and the, the life jacket to get container of water. So, I don't need all this. I don't need to write all the sentences I can use. I can use something like to get water, that's a fragment, to get food, that's a fragment. Because these are the main three parts of the paragraph. Like no provisions, a way to get water, I get a way to get food. The way to get water is to use the canvas and the life jacket to get uh, to make a container for rainwater. The third part here is uh, that he used um, the flashlight, the wire from the flashlight, and the jagged edged, uh, edges of the biscuit tins, the uneven the jagged, the uneven edges of the biscuit tins. So we have some main ideas. Let's see how it happened in the content list. In the content list here, we said that invented ways to get food and water. 
made, uh, yeah, yeah, the same as I said, made container to catch rainwater, made a fishing hook. Now you write the main idea, made a fishing hook. So when you go to write that, you're going to remember, your mind is going to remember the main ideas by make a fishing hook, by using wire and edges of tins. You can write like this, you don't have to write the same sentence from the text. You can write your own language. That's why when you write a fragment like made a container to catch rainwater, you're going to, to imagine what happened. He used his life jacket and the compass to make a container to get water. Made a fishing hook, he used the wire and the edges of biscuit tins to make a hook to catch fish, and so on. Going through the whole text, we're going to work on the same way. But let's see the final product. You see, that's the paragraph, 120 words. Uh, for IGCSE, you have the word limit from 100 to 120. But for, uh, for here, for us here in grade, in grade seven, I give you another word limit, which is from 120 to 150, to make it easier a little bit for you. So, Within your word limit, 120 to 150, you have to stick to the plan because some of you gave me, let's say, two texts together, two summaries. The last one I checked was 306 words, and this is not a summary, okay? So back again, that is the modern answer for the example or the sample that I gave you. A Chinese man is famous for being the longest shipwreck survivor in history. And that's the opening sentence. There is no introduction. There is no introduction paragraph. Just the opening sentence. So that's from paragraph one. While his chef was sinking, he managed to grab a life jacket and put it on. This helped him float around until he spotted a life raft and got onto it. So in the second sentence, in the second sentence, the writer collected how many ideas? He condensed how many ideas together? The, the life jacket, the sinking, the, the life jacket, floating, and the life raft. Four main ideas in one sentence. That's what I'm talking about. That's the skill of summarizing. While his ship was sinking, that's one. He managed to grab the life jacket and put it on. You see the structure here? It's compound complex sentence. Compound complex sentence. In the compound complex sentence, we're using uh, how it's compound complex sentence. We are using here, wait a minute. Okay, we are using while as one of the complex conjunctions. Okay, that makes, makes it a complex sentence. And we're using and, that makes it compound. That's compound complex sentence. Collecting four ideas. That's a wonderful skill. This helped him float around um, around uh, the raft or around, just float around until he spotted a life raft and got onto it. He was lucky. So we use conjunctions because when I show you the samples of your answers right now, you can see that you rarely use conjunctions. Your ideas are not connected. He was lucky to find food provisions inside his life raft, or the life raft, which has sustained him for a few days. Here again, we get two ideas. The idea of finding provisions, I didn't say here because it's a summary, I need the short form. I didn't say uh, chocolate biscuits and juice and so on. I didn't say all this. Because it's not only food, it's food and flashlight and so on. So it's provisions or supplies. So I used only one word to condense the whole thing. He was lucky to find food provisions inside the live raft, which sustained him for a few days. And this has the, the next meaning, sustained him for a few days. That means not for a long time because it would run out. Afterwards, that's one conjunction again. Afterwards, left to his own resources that he lost or he finished his previous resources, okay? And now he's, he's just living with his own. What are his own? Let's go. He devised 
In the sentence, the writer said, he invented. So change the words, use synonyms. He devised ways of staying alive by making a container to collect rain, rainwater, and fishing hook to catch fish. In one sentence, I collected the ideas. Realizing he was losing his strength, after 60 days in the sea, he started swimming around the raft twice a day for exercise until he was rescued. He never lost hope. Okay, so you can see this paragraph, just one or two sentences after that, summarize this page, the second page. We finished the first page together. The second page, one, two, three, four paragraphs in two sentences. Because all of them speak about this. But the first paragraph here, by, by day 60, he lost his physical strength, so he swam around the raft for two hours a day as practice. That's one idea. The next paragraph that he liked the beautiful sea creature. Yeah, look at this one here. In this paragraph. In this paragraph, most of you will, will be dragged to this information. You will see it as a wonderful piece of information to add in the summary. No, it's not. It's not related. Here, the, the text is talking about someone who ship, who's a shipwreck survivor suffering and so on. You're, you're not going to say that he enjoyed the, the variety of beautiful sea creatures he saw there. No, but you're going to say, you may say that he got attacked by sharks. Okay, because sharks occasionally attacked him. You can add this, but you cannot add this. So you have to choose the information that matches the mood of the writing, the topic, the main idea, that supports the main idea. Here in this whole part, the writer is saying that he never lost hope. That he never lost hope. That's the main idea. Here in this paragraph, that he got rescued by, in this paragraph, he got rescued by a Brazilian fisherman or Brazilian fishermen on April the 5th. 1943. So all these paragraphs are just for explaining. We don't need, we don't need them. Before we lose time, I need to take you in a round in your answers to see what's going on. That's sample one. For one of your friends, okay, the Christmas Island is a tiny Australian speck. Just read with me and try to, to remember, where did you see that? Is a tiny Australian speck in the Indian Ocean somewhere between Darwin and Indonesia, so named because it was discovered by Captain William Minor on December the 25th, 1643. The first and foremost oddity, the crabs found nowhere else in such numbers as it happened they are also very fond of. Why has it happened? Uh, you're copying from the text. Can you see any paraphrasing, any, any condensing here? We can't see. Um, as it happened, they are also very fond of the golf course. There are also other kind of, there are also other kind of crabs on the island. There are also other crabs, whatever. Um, the monstrous rubber crab, huge, ugly, and frankly terrifying. That's exactly from the text. Copying from the text. The locally dubbed the crazy ants were carelessly imported. I don't care why they are imported into the, into, into the island. It's not the main idea that we're talking about. It doesn't support the main idea that this island is full of oddities. You didn't say this. For the first part, you just got dragged behind the information about this, uh, the island that it is discovered by Captain Who, on they who, and so on, and where it lies. Just you can see Christmas Island is a tiny uh, island in the Indian Ocean. That's it. You don't have to tell me where and when. I don't care for this. I care for the next idea, which is an island which is full of oddities. After that, you explain these oddities to me and to the reader. So again, this part, the problem that you have a lot of copying, you actually copy, you don't have any word for your own. And when you match them, they are not matching. You don't have any conjunction. 
You just copy and paste, copy and paste, and this is not the way we do the summary. The other sample that we have, it's good, quite good, but not perfectly, because he's the only one who gave me the content list on the top. You see, that what I want you to do, guys, because if you don't do it from now, you will lose marks. And by the way, you have to care for your homework and revise it before you give it to me. In case in the following days, we are going to give some marks in your certificate for those who do the homework, we don't know how, it, how it's going to end. Maybe we're gonna have exams, maybe we don't. And they would say, give marks for those who did the homework and just followed with you and so on. So I need you to pay more, to be more careful with the homework. Pay more attention with that. When I ask you to write the sentence, or oh, I'm sorry, the content list, you have to write the content list, like this example. And that's the only student who gave me the content list. And he's the one that wrote closely to, to be perfect. He's good, but not perfect. He has the content list. He started with the main idea that Christmas Island is a speck in the Indian Ocean. It has many oddities. That's what I need. Go for the meaning. Commonly crabs, there's another kind of crab, the monster's rubber crab has an impenetrable shell. And the crazy ants are his enemy. That's perfect. They go to the stalks of his eyes and eat them. That's perfect, perfect up to now. So he didn't say anything about why, the, how they are imported into the city, uh, into the island, or how they work. And, and so, no, I didn't need all this. He gave me the main ideas. And really, I thank you for this. Before I forget, because we have one minute or less than one minute, that will be the end of our lesson today. I hope you understand the summary right now. Your homework is going to be a right summary about Christmas Island, again, for your section to your teacher, on the group uh, for boys on the, on the website, and don't forget to write the content list. Don't forget to write the content list. Thank you for following me for this day and attending our session today. If you have any question, you can raise your hand before we lose the time limit. Thank you. I hope you have a nice day, inshallah.